Welcome back everyone. Uh, we will continue with the representation theory. In the last lecture, we actually defined some basic terminologies in representation theory. So, in this lecture again I will continue with that. Uh, first, we will actually see what is a quotient module and then uh, some isomorphism theorems uh, related with uh, that concept. So, let us start. So, either quotient module or the factor module So, you must have seen uh, these concepts uh, in other uh, branches of uh, algebra like group theory, ring theory as well as if you have done some model theory. So, very similar to that here also one can define quotient models for uh, models of Lie algebras. So, we start with uh, Lie algebra okay, G over C and then let us say V is actually a uh, module for G. So, V is a module of G. So, other words there is an action of G on ca on capital V. So, as I said before uh, this uh, words, word representation and module can be interchangeably used. Okay. So, we have a module structure on V so, that is given by this map phi which is uh, from G to G L of phi. Okay. So, let us say given by this. So, now we already seen what is a sub module of phi. Okay. So, let us say let us recall that. So, recall a sub module okay. again it is all G sub modules. Okay. So, G sub module W of V is actually a vector subspace. So, it is a vector subspace of V such that when you restrict the action of G on W, then it must be invariant under that action. So, in other words, whenever you take some element x in G, and then w and w. So, then if you compute uh, the action that x dot w, so which is using that phi, it is nothing but phi x w. Okay. So, this must be inside w for all x in g and w and w. Okay. So, then we call this w is a sub module. So, we like I said we also use this simplified notation x w to denote this phi x of w or x dot w. So, all these notations uh, are interchangeably used. Okay. So, just for clarification I will use this in the beginning and later I will use this x w. So, now uh, what is a factor module? So, suppose we have this sub module w. So, then we can actually take this quotient which is V modulo W. So, this is a quotient space. So, this is a clearly a vector space okay, over complex numbers. So, what it is uh, indeed in terms of uh, in terms of elements. So, these are all the cosets. Okay which she defined using this uh, w. Okay. So, you take all translation of w where x is coming from v. So, that is your quotient space and uh, basically so let me recall how you get this quotient space. You define this equivalence relation on v with respect to w. You say x and y are related okay. for x, y and v we say x, y related with respect to the subspace if and only if x minus y is in w. So, then if you calculate uh, the quotient uh, set or the equivalence class related to this x. So, that will be equal to just x plus w. 
Okay, so then if you take this V modulo W which actually denoted as V modulo W. Okay, so this uh, with respect to this delta W. So you take this quotient set which which we identify with V modulo W. Then there is a natural uh, addition and uh, scalar multiplication ingredited from capital V that makes this V modulo W as a vector space over C. So, what is the addition? Let me recall if given two elements x plus x and y, x plus w and y plus w, then the addition is defined to be x plus y w. Similarly, the scalar multiplication given lambda. So, let us say for x, y and v. So, you have this and for x in v and lambda in c, we have lambda times x plus w is equal to lambda x plus w. So, this is how the addition is defined and this is how the scalar multiplication is defined. So, now once you have this quotient space, so one can actually try to uh, define this action of G on this quotient space so using the data. So, what is the data given? So, given is, so V is already a G module okay, and W is given to be G sub module. So, now we have this V modulo W which is the quotient space. We want to make this as a G module. So, how we define? So, define the action of G on this V mod W as follows. Take x in G and then some V in capital V. So, we have x is acting on this v plus w is given to be x v plus w. You compute x v and then take the coset corresponding to that x v. So, this is the definition of the action. So, we have to check this action is first of all well defined and on top of it, it should satisfy the modules property m 1 to m 3. Okay, I will check uh, this is actually defines uh, uh, well defined action. So, I will leave it to you to check uh, all the module properties. Okay. So, so what is the meaning of whether it is well defined or not? So, we can actually take uh, uh, two different elements V1, V2 in capital V. Okay. Say V1, V2, V1, V2 in capital V such that V1 plus W is same as V2 plus W. So, what is the meaning of that? So, this is if and only if using our definition, if you go back. So, V1 and V2 are related using this relation if and only if uh, this difference should be in W okay, because the coset is nothing but X plus W. So, this says this V1 minus V2 should be element of W. So, now you can see that uh, because W is a sub module, if you act with act with the X on this V1 minus V2, this is again element of W as W is a G sub module. So, this implies X dot V1 minus X dot V2 is in W. So, then it is easy to see that x dot v 1 plus w is nothing but equal to x v dot plus w. Okay. So, this proves whenever you have two cosets equal v 1 plus w equal to v 2 plus w, then the corresponding images x dot v 1 and x dot v 2 they are same. Okay. The difference is in w. So, this actually defines well defined action on uh, V mod W 2, V mod W 
where you take x comma v plus w then you send it to x v plus w ok. So, this is the phi bar which is actually defined using the phi. So, I will leave it to you to check this phi bar actually gives model structure on v mod w ok check phi bar gives module structure on v mod ok. So, this is uh, not that hard one can easily check. So, now with this uh, we actually have uh, our factor module or the quotient module. So, now uh, you can actually uh, easily prove the expected isomorphism theorems ok. So, let me let me actually uh, see some examples ok. Uh, let me show some examples before uh, moving to the isomorphism theorem. So, we already have this uh, adjoint representation ok given this G Lie algebra. So, we have this add map from G to G L of G. So, this is going to give us a module structure on G, G is acting on G via this adjoint map. So, that is the adjoint representation or adjoint module. So, now uh, if you think about it, uh, so what will be the sub representations uh, or sub modules? So, ideals will be actually sub representations uh, for this representation ok. If I is a sub module. of G ok. So, I am thinking it as odd representation if and only if I is ideal inside G. So, now if I is ideal if I is an ideal inside G. So, then we can talk about this G modulo I. So, which is actually a Lie algebra ok. So, this is also a Lie algebra, but one can also define what is called this G action on this G modulo I and make it as G module ok. So, that is what we have seen. So, here we can take this quotient and then we can make into a module for G. So, so what is the action? So, if you if you think about it the action is given by x dot y plus i. So, which is the coset then it is just uh, given by again we are using the adjoint action. So, this has to be x y plus i ok. So, this is uh, action that makes ok. So, g acts on g mod i. So, via star ok. So, this is uh, indeed uh, G module action on G mod i ok. So, that is easy to see. So, you can actually uh, think about it. Uh, so, I will leave it to you to check. So, there is another action of uh, G mod i on G mod i ok because G mod i is a Lie algebra ok. So, this is something you check. So, G mod i also acts on G mod i because this is a Lie algebra and you can think this as a vector space ok. So, again how it acts via adjoint adjoint action. So, now you have like uh, different action on G mod i. Uh, using like two different Lie algebras one is using G another one is G mod I. But if you think about it they are closely related because both are given by this star only ok. Ok, so let us uh, uh, move on. So, there is a trivial representation uh, for any any Lie algebra ok. If you start with G so, which is a Lie algebra 
and then let us say V is just a vector space over, over complex numbers. So, then we can make G to act on V trivially, okay. We can make G to act on V trivially. So, what I mean by that you can define this trivial representation as follows. So, G 2 G L of V given by phi of x equal to 0 for all x in G. So, it is easy to see that this map is uh, uh, definitely a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that means if you take x and then v where x in G and then v in capital V. So, you are declaring x dot v is 0 for all v in v and x in G. Okay. So, this is called trivial uh, representation. Sometimes we also say, so we call actually, let us let us fix some terminologies. So, we say this is actually a trivial action, okay. Let us say, let us call it uh, trivial action on V. Okay. We say something is a trivial representation if dimension of V is one dimensional. Okay. If dimension of V is one dimensional and G acts trivially, then we say V is a trivial representation. So, we should not actually get confused with trivial action and trivial representation. So, trivial representation uh, whenever I say something is trivial representation then I mean the dimension of the representation is one dimension. Okay. So, so we also actually uh, denote this by uh, 1 c or just or just by c. Okay. All this notation can be used. So, I will explain later why I want to use this uh, 1C, okay. So, that will become very clear uh, if you if we start uh, talking about tensor product. But anyway, you can also use this uh, C to denote this trivial representation. So, uh, we already seen that SL2C naturally acts on this C 2 okay, because S L 2 C is sitting inside G L 2 C. So, using that uh, 2 by 2 matrices, so the using the natural action of 2 by 2 matrices on C 2. So, we get uh, action of uh, this S L 2 C on C 2. So, I will actually leave it to you to check. So, this is indeed irreducible representation. Okay. So, this this is actually this is an irreducible two dimensional representation of SL 2 C. Okay. So, it is not hard to check uh, like uh, the adjoint action of SL 2 C is also irreducible because uh, as we saw earlier the only sub representations are ideals of uh, SL 2 C because SL 2 C is uh, simple Lie algebra. So, that actually uh, tells us that adjoint representation of SL 2 C is also irreducible. Okay. So, this is a fact adjoint representation of SL 2 C gives us three dimensional irreducible representation of SL 2 C. So, later in the next class I will classify all finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL 2 C. So, of course, uh, those uh, include all these three examples. So, one is uh, one dimensional trivial representation, another one is uh, two dimensional this natural representation acting on C 2 third is so this adjoint representation uh, acting on the cell to C via adjoint map. So, 
uh, here is a simple exercise. Uh, suppose uh, dimension of V is uh, one dimensional, okay. So, let us say dimension is one, uh, where V is a representation of SL to C, okay. So, then I want to climb that the action of SL to C on this capital V must be trivial, okay. So, we climb that. So, let us say this is given. So, you have a one dimensional representation of SL to C. So, we do not know anything about the action of SL to C, but we want to climb that uh, the action of SL to C on this V must be trivial. So, how one checks this? So, one can use this fact that S L to C, the derivative algebra of S L to C is uh, itself. Okay. So, because the derivative algebra of S L to C is itself, uh, so it is enough to prove for uh, basis elements. Okay. For example, if you take, so what, what is the basis recall? So, you have x and then h and then y. So, where x is given to be this upper triangular matrix, h is given to be the diagonal matrix and y is given to be the lower triangular matrix. So, then we also have this uh, very explicit uh, commutative relations. So, x y is h and then h x is 2 x and then h y is minus 2 y. So, from this it is easy to see each uh, uh, element in the basis is actually a commutator of two element. Okay. So, that means actually if you, if you take the action for example, let us take the x action. So, x is nothing but h by 2 x. So, this is acting on okay, acting on this uh, capital V. So, this is one dimensional. So, how this h by 2 will act? Okay, h by 2 will act as some scalar. Okay, let us say v is spanned by this small vector v. So, v is non-zero. So, then this h will act on v as some lambda x v and then this y will act on v as some lambda y v and then this h will act as some lambda h v. Okay. So, in particularly if you compute x v, there is another way to compute x v because x is given by the bracket uh, h by 2 comma x. So, that is also acting on v. So, if you write it very explicitly, this is h by 2 x minus x into h by 2 acting on v. So, then you can see that on the one side you get lambda x v on the other side you are getting lambda x uh, lambda h by 2 v minus lambda h by 2 lambda x v. So, if you just uh, because lambda x and lambda h by 2 both are complex numbers you can see that if you take it out. So, these two things actually gets cancelled you get 0. So, this proves that lambda x must be 0. Okay. So, indeed if you are if you are writing uh, this x as commutator of two things. Okay. So, then uh, for example, like each element acts as scalar. So, the commutator because both of them this h by 2 and the x both of them leave this one dimensional space invariant if you take trace of this commutator that will be 0. So, that is all we are using. So, then that makes the trace of x to be 0, but the trace of x will be lambda x times 1. So, that, that forces that lambda x is 0. So, similarly you can use the same idea uh, to prove lambda y 0 and as well as lambda h by 2 or lambda h is 0. Okay. So, that, that proves that S L 2 C acts trivially 
on any one dimensional representation. So, that makes it actually if you start with any one dimensional representation of SL to C, then it must be isomorphic to uh, this uh, trivial representation that we already see. So, uh, so let us move on. So, to state uh, this isomorphism theorems, uh, we need to actually define what is called homomorphism in the category of uh, representations of G. So, we will actually fix the Lie algebra okay, G and then we want to consider all the representations of G. Okay, th those are all the objects in our category. So, now, so what will be the homomorphism in this category? So, it is uh, natural to define if you have seen what is uh, homomorphism in the like uh, G representations for G is group. So, it is it's the same way one can define it here also. So, basically given two representations V and W, so let us say G modules. So, a homomorphism theta is a map from V to W. So, it must be C linear map to begin with such that, so this should commute with the action of G. So, what is the meaning of that? If you take theta of x v, so that should be equal to x times theta of w and uh, sorry x times theta of v. And this is true for all x in g and v in v. Okay. So, this should be true for all. So, in particularly, so what does it mean? So, it means, so you have this map v to w theta and then you have this action given by the element x. Okay. I am suppressing the notation. Basically, uh, let us say this is given by phi. So, let us let us write it uh, very explicitly. So, let us say phi is the representation that is defined on capital V and then let us say phi 1 and then phi 2 is the representation defined on capital W. So, then what is this x that we are talking about? This is phi 1 of x. So, which is a map from V to V. So, now you have this theta which is defined from V to W. So, now you have another map from W to W that is again given by phi 2 of x. So, now the so the equation this star means this diagram must commute. Okay. So, if I take uh, some V from here and then this is mapped to theta of V on the right side. Okay, there is a way to actually reach uh, using the action. Okay, so you can go to uh, this x dot v, which is phi one of x applied on v, and then you can go to again using the theta theta applied on phi one of x of v. So now you can also go from v to theta of v, and then come back to using this phi 2 of x, okay, phi 2 of x applied on theta of v. So, these two should be equal. Okay. So, you start with v, come to phi 1 of v and then apply theta on that. That should be same as you apply theta first and then apply phi 2 of x. So, these two must be equal. So, that is the meaning of this diagram commutes. Okay. If theta satisfies this property for each and every x, okay, this diagram commutes for each x in G, then you call this theta is actually uh, G module homomorphism from V to W. Okay. So, now it is not hard to check, uh, here is a proportion. If theta is actually a G module map, or G model homomorphism, 
then the kernel of theta and image of theta. So, they are sub modules in respective modules. Okay. So, this is sub module of V and this is sub module of W. So, these are all G sub modules. Okay. So, let us check for the kernel. So, what is the proof? So, what is the kernel of theta? The kernel of theta of those V in capital V such that theta of V is 0. So, we need to prove that if I start with x in g and v in kernel theta, then if you apply x dot v, that is also should be in kernel theta. So, this is what we need to check. So, let us let us see how this x dot v is actually v1 can get. So, you apply theta of x dot v. So, that is what uh, you need to check. We need to get we need to get this is 0. But what is theta of x dot v? Theta of x dot v, if you go back to the definition, it says theta of x dot v is x dot theta of v. Okay. Maybe I will put this dot so that uh, we are talking about action. So, that means theta of x dot v is same as x dot theta of v, but theta of v is 0. So, x acting on 0 will be 0. So, that will prove that theta of x dot v is 0 that says x dot v is in the kernel theta and this is true for all x in g and v in kernel theta. So, we get kernel theta is sub module for v. So, g is sub module. Similarly, one can check for image of theta. So, image of theta is nothing but theta of v where v is coming from capital V. So, it is easy to see that this is actually a subspace of w. Okay. So, now if you start with x in g and then some w in image of theta. So, we want to prove that x dot w is in. So, we want to prove that x dot w is in image of theta, but uh, w is in image of theta. So, that implies w will be theta of some v for some v in capital V. So, now if you compute x dot w, so that will be x dot theta of v, so which will be theta of x dot v, so which is same as theta of sorry, we wanted to prove x dot w is in the image, okay. this is x dot v. So, this you can see that this is already in the image. So, x dot w is nothing but theta of x dot v. So, that is again in the image of theta. So, this proves that image of theta is again sub module for the image space or the codomain. Okay. So, now uh, we are ready to actually state the isomorphism theorems. Okay. So, actually more or, more or less uh, only thing that we need to check in this isomorphism theorems whether the maps that we have defined are all well defined maps and whether they are G model maps. So, I will leave it to, to check all of this okay, because uh, from linear algebra course uh, we know that such maps are there. So, using those maps uh, one can actually establish the required isomorphism. So, let me just uh, state this result. So, here is the isomorphism theorem. So, as before uh, the, the very first statement is about uh, uh, is about having a linear sorry having a G module map and then relating the quotient model V modulo kernel theta and the image of the theta. So, start with uh, G being Lie algebra over C and V and W be G modules and let us say theta is G module homomorphism. So, then we can actually we already seen that kernel theta is a G sub module of V and then image theta is G sub module of W. So, we can talk about V modulo kernel theta. Okay. So, there is this induced map from theta tilde 
from V modulo kernel theta to image of theta given by so V plus kernel theta is sent to theta of V plus yeah sorry theta of V. So this is is an isomorphism so that we know this is a linear uh, isomorphism but the claim is so this is indeed G modulo isomorphism. So, G modulo isomorphism in it is G modulo homomorphism which is again bijective. Okay. So, bijective is already there. So, only thing need to uh, need to be checked because there are two action two modules are given. Okay. This is the factor module V modulo kernel theta on the right side we have this image theta. So, this theta tilde which we have defined we need to check it is a G module map. So, that is more or less trivial to check because theta tilde of x dot v kernel theta. So, this is going to be equal to theta tilde x v plus kernel theta using the definition of uh, factor module. So, then this is same as theta of x v. Okay. So, then if you think about it theta is actually G module map. So, x is coming out. So, then you get x times x acting on theta of v. Then you get x dot uh, <coughs> v plus sorry theta of theta tilde of v plus kernel theta. So, this is what we want out. So, theta tilde x dot small v plus kernel theta should be equal to x dot theta tilde v plus kernel theta. So, this is something very easy to check. So, it is it's an element it is an elementary fact from linear algebra. So, this theta tilde is an isomorphism. So, that I am not going to check I will leave it to you to check. So, what is the second statement? <coughs> if u and w they are actually sub modules of V again G sub modules. So, then we can talk about this uh, <coughs> various spaces. So, u plus w it is easy to check u plus w is again G sub module. So, that I will leave it to you to check and then w will become automatically G sub module of u plus w. So, we can talk about the quotient u plus w modulo w. So, this will be naturally isomorphic to u modulo u set intersection w. Okay. So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. So, here lots of many many facts are there. First of all u plus w is a g sub module of v and u intersection w is also G sub module of U as well as V and W becomes G sub module of uh, U plus W <coughs> and we can consider these two factors and they are isomorphic. So, here is the third statement. So, suppose uh, <coughs> U is contained in W, both of them are sub modules of V. So, then <coughs> we can talk about this W modulo U that is inside V modulo U. Okay. So, this becomes G sub module and we can talk about now quotient of these two V modulo U quotient by double modulo U. So, then this will be isomorphic to naturally V modulo U. Okay. Again once you have actually defined uh, the natural isomorphism then we need to check that natural isomorphism is actually G modulo isomorphism. Okay. 
So, that is actually something one can easily check. So, I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, with this uh, we have uh, this uh, fundamental theorem of isomorphism for modules. So, I will stop here, uh, I will continue with uh, Schur's lemma and some consequences of Schur's lemma in the next class. Thank you.